Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Fantasy Football Week 1 Tight End Start or Sit Rankings. I'm going to basically be going over every matchup in Week 1, all 16 games, and talking about both starting tight ends on each roster. I might mention a couple backup tight ends here and there, but exclusively I'm talking about each starting tight end for every team, and I'm going to tell you whether they should start or sit this coming week. And yeah, without further ado, let's, let's get into it. But before we start, I want to go ahead and thank all of you that have subscribed to this channel, continue to support. I extremely appreciate it, especially when you leave likes down below, leave comments. I, I mean, I, I can't thank you guys enough. I'll try to get to as many comments as I possibly can. But again, thank you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. So, hey, everybody, how's it going? Um, before we begin, I just want to mention a couple things. If you go ahead and go down and comment below, I will... I will make sure, without a doubt, I'm going to respond to your, your comment, right? You just got to give me some time because especially yesterday, I had like 200 comments and getting to all of those were extremely difficult, but I got it done, right? So I'll, I'll make sure to get to everyone's comments. So before um, you go ahead and you go down to the comment section, you know, ask a question or, you know, make a comment, doesn't matter. Make sure that if you're asking a question about, you know, who to start this week or rate my team, make sure you tell me what the scoring format is, um, how many teams are in your league. And give me majority of the information, right? So if you're asking, like, who do I start in my flex, X or Y, um, maybe there's a receiver on your team that may, you know, may be a better start. So just go ahead and just name everybody so that I can get it done within one quick fell swoop and um, so that it'll make it easier on me and I can answer your question as soon as I possibly can, okay? So let's get into the matchups and the start and sits. As you can see above, Zach Ertz is a 100% start this coming week. I think especially with the injury of Alshon, uh, excuse me, why can't I say it, Alshon Jeffrey, and him not being able to play this week, I think it's going to give Zach Ertz a little bit of a uh, opportunity and uptick in targets because I mean, where else is Nel um, excuse me, where else is Nick Foles going to throw the ball, right? Nelson Aguilar, yes, he's a receiver within this offense, but I think Zach Ertz is going to be the security blanket and the main target um, for Nick Foles this coming week. So 100%, you should start Zach Ertz. I mean, you drafted him to start on your team consistently. I don't think there's a single week that Zach Ertz shouldn't start on your team. And, I mean, it's pretty plain and simple. He's one of the best tight ends in football. Now, on the other side, we have Austin Hooper, okay? 100% don't start him, right? If you have to start Austin Hooper, you must be playing in a 16-man league or you made a mistake and you didn't draft a, a tight end until maybe the 12th, 13th round, okay? That'd be a mistake. But if you, if you have the option of not starting him, please... Do so. I don't. I don't think Austin Hooper is going to be great this season. Um, I don't see the offense for the Atlanta Falcons revolving around the tight end position. They did have that when Tony Gonzalez was with the organization a couple years back, but ever since his retirement, you know, they they really haven't found a, a substitute for the position, and they haven't really gone back to passing to the tight end very often. So for sure, I would say go ahead and set Austin Hooper this coming week. Okay. So the next guy we're going to talk about. Okay. I mean, this is the matchup of the week, I think. I swear there there's a lot of fantasy points to be had here. It just depends on whether it goes the way that a lot of us are thinking, right? Um, Jack Doyle, in my opinion, is a for sure start. Yes, Eric Ebron is sitting in the wings trying to absorb targets and receptions, but I like Jack Doyle to be the starting tight end. I mean, he is the starting tight end, and I, I like him to have a lot of production, probably eight targets, six receptions, somewhere around there. The yards we'll see, the touchdowns we'll see. But I, I like Jack Doyle as a top 12 wide receiver this coming week. And in fantasy for the entire season. Um, he, he performed really, really well last season. I think he had 81 receptions throughout the entire season. Um, so Jack Doyle, he's able to perform, especially in PPR. Um, and with, with Andrew Luck there, I mean, the last time we saw Andrew Luck play, you know, was, was in 2016, right? But he used to use Kobe Fleener and Dwayne Allen a lot exclusively, right? So he's going to be able to fill up the, the stat sheet for Jack Doyle. So go ahead and start him this week. Um, Tyler Eifert. Okay, here's here's a tricky one though, right? I think Tyler Eifert is probably my like number 14 tight end this week, right? Because yes, he's he's a little injury prone and we don't know which kind of Tyler Eifert we're going to get. There might, you know, there might be the opportunity of Tyler Croft, the backup tight end coming in, taking some snaps, maybe taking the, the red zone attempts. We never know. I would rather have the other 13 tight end 
tight end starting that I'm going to mention a little bit later, then have Tyler Eifert. But again, if if you have a question, go down below. Be like, okay, I, I believe Tyler Eifert can do X, Y, and Z comparatively to this guy. What do you think? And I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll type out a message to you. Anyway, so the next game, we've got the Bills versus the Ravens. Don't start either of these guys. You know, the tight end position for the Ravens is a little questionable as of right now. Mark Andrews, I think, is probably the best tight end on the roster, but he's not even slated as the, the number one tight end. Um, Hayden Hurst, who I thought was going to be great, injured, out for like four weeks. And, yeah, I, I don't like the, the tight end situation as of right now unless Mark Andrews gets the starting job. So Nick Boyle, just don't even touch him. Shouldn't even be on your roster. Charles Clay, on the other hand, he's the same kind of deal. I don't even want him on my roster. I think he just stinks. Um, and especially with Nathan Peterman at quarterback against that Ravens uh, defense. I, I don't like Charles Clay this week. Not at all. Sit him. Okay, so we have the Saints versus the Buccaneers. I like O.J. Howard this week. Okay, Now you might be thinking, um, really? O.J. Howard? Um, I think he's on my waivers. Okay, let me just explain, right? In the you know last season, right, obviously there's Cameron Bray. Um, Cameron Bray is more of a tight end that's going to be used with Jameis Winston. Okay, On the other hand, with... Ryan Fitzpatrick, last season, right, when he came in when Jameis Winston was injured, um, O.J. Howard had a pretty good couple weeks, right? In the three games that he played with um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, there were two separate games in which he had three-plus receptions, uh, 50-plus receiving yards, and one touchdown apiece, right, in two of the games, okay? So that that in, in a PPR standpoint, right, that's almost 15 points, right? Bada-boom. We've got a good tight end. I think O.J. Howard is going to be good this week. I'd go ahead and start him. Um, he's probably around. I think he might be even behind Jack Boyle by a little bit. So he's one of the lower end starts for me this coming week. Okay? Ben Watson, on the other hand, I think he's he's probably going to be okay this season. He's an, I don't know how he's been in the league for so long. I think this is maybe his 13th season, something like that. Some crazy number. This man's been playing for a while. The brain damage is going to be a lot. But we'll see how it ends up. Um, Ben Watson, I think he can be a good, I mean, I hope to, I'm hoping, right, that he's going to be good enough and manageable enough to start in some weeks, but I, I don't think that Ben Watson in this week is going to be amazing. Um, the Buccaneers defense did, I think they allowed the second least amount of points um, to tight ends last season. I think they're going to go ahead and do the same and lock up the tight end position in week one. That's why I'm not starting Ben Watson. Uh, okay, I mean, let, let's be real. The, the pictures say it all, right? Ryan Griffin, nope. Gronkowski's a stud, yes. Do I have to say more? I don't think so. Start your Gronk. You drafted him to start him. He's an animal. Next, Kyle Rudolph. Okay, so real quick, if you haven't seen my Kyle Rudolph video, um, go ahead and watch that. It's honestly, it's 16 minutes of golden content, and it'll explain to you why Kyle Rudolph's such a beast, Okay. George Kittle, on the other hand, against the linebackers of and the safeties of the, the Vikings, eh, can he match up with Anthony Barr and Kendricks and Harrison Smith and Iloka? I don't know. I, I don't really like George Kittle this coming week. I don't like many 49ers this coming week because that defense just scares me a little bit. We'll just we'll see. Maybe the, the defense is a myth and the Shanahan offense destroys the Vikings. But otherwise, for sure start. Kyle Rudolph on your team. George Kittle, not so much. Okay, next. Delaney Walker. I mean, it's another easy one, guys. Delaney Walker, for sure start. Mike Jasicki, um, he's going to be the starting tight end for the Dolphins this year. I don't know how many targets or how much production he's going to have. I'd say we're going to have to wait, see how he produces in week one, see how you know vital he is to the offensive game plan, and it will be able to determine in the coming weeks whether he can start, maybe sit on your bench for a bye week play. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So otherwise, keep Mike Jasicki on your bench. Um, the next matchup, right? The Giants versus the Jaguars. We have Austin Safari and Jenkins, and we have Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram um, wasn't concussion protocol. He should be fine to play this week. I'd go ahead and start Evan Ingram for sure. Um, he's he's a top talent at the tight end position. Austin Safari and Jenkins. Um, yeah, I, I would go ahead and say. Uh, probably don't start on this coming week. Austin Safari and Jenkins is going to be used a lot in the blocking schemes for the the Jaguars, but he has the opportunity to you know seam out, make a play here and there. But I'm going to go ahead and say that the the guys that I'm going to mention to start this week are all better than the Austin Safari and Jenkins opportunity this week. So go ahead and 
Leave him on your bench and sit. Austin Safarian Jenkins. Next, David Njoku. For sure start. Vance McDonald. For sure sit. Now, Vance McDonald is a hell of a blocking tight end. He might be a top three blocking tight end in the NFL. Right? This is why they went and got him. So they can put another man on the line who's not an offensive lineman who can at least be covered just in case they want to you know, seam him out here and there. And he can block like an offensive lineman. So Vance McDonald, you know, he's not really a offensive threat, especially in fantasy. So I'm going to go ahead and say sit him this week. David Njoko, on the other hand, I don't know what it is. I like the Cleveland Browns. Maybe I got the hard knocks bias, but I like David Njoku this week. Go ahead and start him, and um, hopefully it pays off But for me and for you, for those of you who are starting him this week. Okay, another easy one, right? <laughs> Look at Antonio Gates' face. <laughs> oh my god, and and Travis Kelsey's face, man. These pictures are golden. Uh, Travis Kelsey for sure start. I mean, I don't really have to argue for it. And Antonio Gates, I mean, I don't know how much you know football shape he's in. I know he knows the the offensive playbook front and back pretty easily with the Chargers. He's gonna have a couple you know opportunities here and there, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say sit Antonio Gates for this coming week. Okay, so the next matchup, we have the Cowboys versus the Panthers. For sure, start Greg Olson. Um, yes, there are a lot of mouths to feed in the Panthers organization with Funches, uh, McCaffrey, and DJ Moore. Um, but I like Greg Olson this week against that um, that Dallas Cowboys defense. Uh, on the other hand, right, Geoff Swain has just been named the starting tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. I thought it was going to be Blake Jarwin. It's not. It's going to be Geoff Swain. Uh, I think he might. Okay, so if this kid ends up really being the number one tight end and not splitting with Blake Jarwin, there is an opportunity for him to be pretty decent, right? He can be a guy that you can go snack, put him on your bench, and he's going to be able to produce. You know, if let's say for example you own Greg Olson, right? And at week four he has a bye week. Go see how this week pans out for Geoff. If he plays well, pick him up. Wait a couple weeks. Boom. There's your start. Okay. Otherwise, this week, go ahead and leave him on the bench. A lot of you don't even know who he is. I, I mean, I'm not too familiar, even though I'm uh, a Cowboys fan. Or, a, you know, I don't know. I'm an offensive line of the Cowboys fan. How about that? So, the next matchup, we got the Redskins and we have the Cardinals. Here's the thing about the Redskins, right? Jordan Reed is not healthy. Can you believe that? I mean, let's let's sit here for a couple minutes and let's talk about this, Okay. One of the best tight ends, one of the most athletic tight ends in football. Okay, a couple years back, animal, but he can't stay healthy. It's incredible how he can't stay healthy. It's honestly a phenomenon. I think they need to get a study group out here uh, to Washington, and they need to check out what he eats. Maybe it's the water he drinks. He can't stay healthy. I don't know what it is. Um, Coach Gruden uh, for the Redskins, you know, uh, during a press conference yesterday, he said Chris Thompson. Looks amazing. He looks healthy. Jordan Reed, on the other hand, not so good. How is that possible? Chris Thompson's the one that had surgery. How is Jordan Reed the one that doesn't look good? I mean, it's mind-boggling. I'm leaving him on the bench this week. If if the head coach is saying he's kind of iffy, then he's not starting for me. I'm not going to put out a guy who's injured. Ricky Seals-Jones, on the other hand, you know. Um, Sam Bradford likes throwing the tight end position. I think Seals-Jones couldn't have a good week. He's probably one of my, he's probably around the Jack Doyle, O.J. Howard range. Uh, maybe even lower than those two. Actually, yes, lower than those two. He's probably my last resort of starting tight ends um, of all the guys that I mentioned to start. So he's he's a lower end kind of tight end, but I still like him uh, this coming week against the, um, the Redskins defense. All right, so what do we have here? We Okay, I mean... Look at the screen and tell me one of these two tight ends are going to be fantasy relevant. I don't think so. I think Nick Vanette has an opportunity because the Seahawks like to use the tight end position, right? They went and picked up Ed Dixon this offseason to come in and try to fill up that Jimmy Graham spot. I don't see that happening. I don't think Ed Dixon... I mean, I think Ed Dixon is actually injured, if I'm not mistaken. Nick Vanette has an opportunity to be relevant, but I'm going to give both these guys a no. I'm not even... No. No. No, I'm not talking about it. Don't start either. Aha, this is what I like to see right here, okay? We have the Bears versus the Packers. Couldn't find a picture with Jimmy Graham in a Packers jersey unless it was Photoshopped. So we're going to deal with this, right? Start them both. Trey Burton in a Matt Nagy offense. Been a lot of hype around him. 
uh, coming out saying that he's going to be the Travis Kelsey of this offense. I'd like to see it. Put him in the starting lineup. Jimmy Graham, tight end. Whew, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the red zone. I think Jimmy Graham is going to have a great season this year with Aaron Rodgers. And I'd go ahead and start him every week um, without a doubt in my mind. Okay, last two games, right? I mean, look at this. Look at what are the options, right? Eric Tomlinson and Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson's a little bit banged up too for the Lions, okay? It's the Lions versus the Jets, if you didn't know. Again, another one of these Seahawks tight ends that I couldn't get a, a picture with them in a different jersey on their appropriate teams. So, Eric Tomlinson, I mean, they had uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins last year on the Jets. Tomlinson's not going to be great. Luke Wilson's already injured, not going to be great. Don't start either of them. Please, please don't even t- don't tell me you have them on your roster. Unless you're playing Dynasty, I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to see it. That's scary, okay? The last game, Tyler Higby, nah. Okay, Todd Gurley, Brandon Cooks, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. There's already too many mouths to feed there. Tyler Higby's not getting any. Now, don't get me wrong. Tyler Higby's going to be on the field, but he, and he's a really good blocking tight end, right? He's up there with Vance McDonald. So don't be, you know, don't be afraid of Tyler Higby. Be petrified because if this if this guy ends up on your starting lineup, you are asking to lose in the week. Okay, he's literally not going to catch anything. Please, if he catches the touchdown, I'm going to cry. But the chances are he's not going to. Now on the other side of the field, we have Jared Cook, who has been a decent tight end one throughout the last couple seasons. Um, this coming week against the Rams defense, I don't like the matchup. I personally would go ahead and sit him. I like the other options that I mentioned earlier. And that's pretty much it. We blew through this video. Why? Because it's so easy. Tight ends are simple. You either have a top five tight end or you don't. Okay. The the, the 6 to 12 range is going to change on a weekly basis due to matchups. But if you have a top five tight end, man, it's easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go down below. Subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. If you also uh, want me to answer any questions, go down below into the comment section. Make sure you tell me your league's, uh, league size, whether it comes to teams, your, your scoring formats, and um, what the question is. And I'll go ahead and try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully this answers all of your questions for the week one of the, you know, 2018 regular season. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.